As we continue our focus on Jazz Appreciation Month, uh, which is the month of April, historically South African jazz has been a powerful form of expression. Artists like Hugh Masekela, Miriam Makeba and Abdullah Ibrahim use their music to bring attention to the struggles of the country. And today, South African jazz continues to evolve and thrive with a new generation of musicians pushing the boundaries of the genre and incorporating contemporary influences. <coughs> Now, with a career marked by a deep commitment to the genre, our panelists brings a unique perspective to today's discussion on the state of South African jazz. Please join me in welcoming Matseko uh, Mosito, Tsidi Somonaheng, Matabo, uh, Masamola and Gwen Ansel, who will join us virtually as we celebrate Jazz Appreciation Month and explore the vibrant sounds and stories that define this beloved genre. A very good morning to you, all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, thank you. And a good morning to you, Gwen, over there. Good morning to you and my fellow panellists and your watchers. Hi, this is Gwen. Indeed, indeed. All right, uh, I'm going to start with you. Uh, as we continue our focus on Jazz Appreciation Month, the big question is, uh, what does jazz music mean to you? Well, jazz music means a whole lot. Um, I think it is a very important music. It is music that is as ancient as time itself. Mm. And when you really trace, you know, the time from slavery to where we are now, it really has carried humanity. And as somebody that works in the space of radio, I think, I mean, it is my personal discourse actually yeah. to, this is why I'm on radio, mm. to mm. promote this music, to, um, you know, to sell the story of who we are yes. Um, yes. as black people and also to sell the idea that jazz music is not Sunday music that it is everyday right. music, that it, it is the reflective music of the people, um, because it almost demands that of us, doesn't it, for us to just sit with ourselves and actually, you know, listen to the lyrics, listen to the messaging in the notes. Um, so for me, very important genre, and it's wonderful to see the resurgence um, of this music in this day and age. Yeah. I quite like what you said, that jazz music is not Sunday music. Because I've often heard people say, uh, I know, when, uh, why are you listening to jazz music on a Wednesday? We're going to listen to that on a Sunday. No. I mean, how do you change that, uh, that mindset? How do we bring that mindset shift, that jazz music is everyday music? Well, I think if you look at what's happening in the space currently uh, with contemporary jazz, it, it is everyday music. And I think because we live such demanding, such busy lives, you know, taking a moment to listen to your favorite jazz artist mm. um, can, can almost make you present in the moment. So I, I use the example of there is no such thing, for example, as old and new music. I don't see music in that linear fashion. It's timeless. I think, especially when it comes yeah. to jazz music. Mm. So being able to listen to a, an album by Sakile, for example, from 1984, right now, it, it, it can really speak to your present and future yeah, yeah. In, in, a, in a very profound way. And it can help you in your daily life. It can help you with your spirituality, which is mm. a big theme universally at the moment. It can help you to, be, to, to, to find your contribution. And mm. I really like what the contemporary jazz artists are doing now because they're really pushing the boundaries and really just breaking down those walls yeah. for creativity for, I mean, I, I, I think of artists like uh, Nduduzo Makatsini, um, Bokane Daya, uh, 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 Tandinduli, who are pianists, but they're also using the, their first instrument, you know, their voices as well to kind of expand on ideas and expand on um, storytelling, because we really do need to be active in writing Absolutely. ourselves into history. 100%, yeah. 100%. Now, Tzidius, so just picking up on the point that she said that there's no old music, there's no mu new music, because music is music after all, and it's is timeless it? music. And as a, as a writer yourself, yeah. why do you think it's so essential to document the stories of emerging jazz artists? Oh, man, because I, I'm personally tired of Europeans owning the narrative oh, all the tell time. Tell me about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all the time when we need to know about certain people. But mm -hmm. la we should ask for grants, you know, to fly overseas and go to mm -hmm. their institutions. You know what I mean? So to me, it's about um, owning 
what it is that is ours. Yeah. Because, you know, there are fairly accessible means now mm. Um, mm. also. So why are we not utilizing those means to kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Tell it uh, yeah. as we see it because we are on the ground as well. You know, sure. we're, not, we're not engaging from a removed position. These are people. Mm. These are the homies. These are people that we hang out with. Mm. So mm. why not? <laughs> yeah, and you know, what's at the bedrock of jazz music is not just the lyrics, it's not just the melodies or the beat, but it's the storytelling element that is so vital in, uh, in the entire architecture of jazz music. So uh, how do you approach then the task of honoring the legacy of some of the older generation of jazz musicians? Through speaking about the newer cats who were influenced by them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think my, my job is to tell about the contemporary or to try to narrate the story of the contemporary as, as a way to link it to past influences. Okay. Because if we are speaking about, I don't know, whoever is popping at the moment, they have their own mentors. She mentioned um, Umakatin. Umakatin mm. has been influenced by, by um, Brabegim Selig, who has been influenced by Ntatema Koi Taina, you know what I mean? Mm. So he's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a scholarship that you engage, that you're able to engage with when you gauge the contemporary. Got you. Because Got then you. the cats will tell you what, what was before, and then you go back and check that out. Mm. And there's what comes after as well, because there are younger people who are looking up to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's an ongoing discourse, like um, yeah. she said. And yeah. I quite like uh, the synergy between the influence of the new cats and the influence of uh, the older folk. And uh, if you blend all that, it's absolute magic. And uh, as a jazz appreciator, Matabo, how do you see emerging artists uh, in the genre staying true to their roots and uh, staying true to the essence of what jazz music is? So, um, as you know, they've both mentioned um, this um, sound or genre, right, is deeply rooted in history, right, in terms of where we come from. And we see it a lot just in terms of the people that have come before us, yeah. um, the artists that have, you know, paved the route. But then in terms of staying true to our roots, what we see a lot is... Um, first of all, reimagination of whatever has been put before in terms of like the songs that have come before. And there is a lot of like mentorship also that happens and carries out through. Mm -hmm. And also we see, um, you know, staying true to people's roots through how much history we still find in today's music. You mm -hmm. know, it could be music that comes um, this year or whatsoever, but there's still that reflection that says these are the societal issues that we are faced with. But in essence, those actually have a linkage to our history and mm -hmm. the past that we have as a people. So there is, um, you know, deep roots that go in terms of first mentorship, but also a revisitation always of where we come from as yeah, a people yeah. and the history that we um, are anchored in, in terms of the music. Okay, you're making very interesting uh, sentiments there. And I want to pick your brain on... Uh, whether you think jazz music should be susceptible to adding a bit of creativity, creative flair, and just adding different influences in jazz music as per the new cats would do in terms of injecting their own creativity, or do you think that jazz music should just be left as it is? No, so, I mean, creativity is definitely there. There's a lot of creativity. So it's not just um, recycling of the music. Mm -hmm. It's like creativity and there are elements that we see that are very like different from what we are used to. Would it not so, dilute the whole essence of jazz music though? It doesn't. It really it doesn't. doesn't. In as much as we infuse what is actually, what we see is actually like an infusion of what's new and you know there's a sense of like new people that come into the music and with them coming in there's like new ideas. So we cannot keep the genre like in its purest form but at the same time, there are roots to everything that we find. And there's like adding on to that. 
So we actually see a lot of creativity without taking away the roots. I guess each to his own, man, because yeah. my dad wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> Definitely, there's different He's an ardent jazz lover, and yeah. uh, I raised this argument, this question with him, uh, saying that, uh, yeah. imagine jazz and a piano. Imagine jazz <laughs> and uh, quieto, for, for instance. Now, Gwen, let me also bring you into this conversation. Now, we are in a post-COVID-19 era, and in what way do you think the COVID-19 pandemic has had an effect on uh, jazz, jazz musicians and their performances? Um, that's a very good question. Before I answer it, I think I ought to go back to this issue of Sunday music. Yes, because yes, please. One of, the ways in which we can, <laughs> one of the ways in which we can stop that is actually sitting right there in your studio. If broadcasters broadcast it in more slots at more times of day, in more days of the week, then it would cease to be Sunday music. <laughs> so I think perhaps take that back to your managers. But to go on I know, to I know they're watching. The <laughs> Great. Let's hope they're listening. <laughs> in terms of the state of South African jazz post-COVID, I think we've got to separate out the state of the music, which as everybody has said so far on the panel, mm -hmm. is possibly richer and more interesting than it has ever been. But since the root and bedrock of jazz everywhere lies in collectivity and in improvisation, yes. you have to say that collectivity goes back through time. And that is why jazz artists build on those who have gone before as well as looking forward. Mm. And the improvisation, of course, is the way in which they do. And of course, jazz and ama piano are already cousins. A lot of the ideas in Ama Piano actually came out of South African jazz. And <laughs> the pianist Don Laka has already created choir jazz. So this stuff that you're talking about is going on yeah. and will continue to go on because musicians are improvisers. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what COVID did, um, it had a very negative effect on the state of individual musicians and on the state of the places where they play like venues. Those, that those venues that survived are living on an economic knife edge, which means that they are not able to offer artists very often what they need. Yeah. Studios have increased their fees. Um, some venues have decreased to post to pre-COVID levels, under pre-COVID levels, the fees that they are able to pay to artists. Meanwhile, costs are going up. We all know that the cost of living is going up. Sure. And artists have to carry a vast number of unpaid expenses, rehearsal, transport, all of those things. And in that situation, you actually have to ask, there's brilliant music being made, but how far is all of this sustainable without a stronger economic model and without more appreciation from policymakers? that artists are not, they may show a wonderful display on stage and the most magnificent artistry, but they're going home and having to make a trade-off between mm. paying their kids school fees and upgrading their instrument. Yeah, and uh, in, in, in these challenging times, how have you seen the jazz community come together, uh, you know, in terms of uh, bringing the sustainability that you're talking about? And uh, what are some of the initiatives that have come out to support uh, the uh, more established and the emerging jazz artists? I think artists work together. This is another instance of the collectivity which lies at the core of jazz. Yeah. Artists do work together, they find gigs for one another, they network. Um, many leaders actually pay transport and catering to bring people together for a rehearsal. I'm not saying all do, but many do. Mm, mm. So it is a community, and I don't think you can undermine that. But given that everybody is struggling, you can't rely on people to have the resources to do that constantly and consistently. Mm -hmm. And we need to be looking at what city authorities are doing to make venues more accessible, to support transport for everybody, not just for artists, but it would be an enormous assistance to artists. Yes, sure. To make our cities safer at night 
so more music could happen there. Mm -hmm. All of these things, although they're not specifically directed at artists, could be an enormous support to artists. Indeed, indeed. Matsako, do you want to share with us your personal experience of uh, you know, playing jazz music as a DJ and the impact that you believe this will have on your listeners? Um, I mean, in the context of radio, um, I think, I mean, I do the 4 to 6 a.m. slot. I've done many slots on, on radio and I carry this music wherever I go, just like a favorite piece of furniture. So yeah. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to putting it online, um, I think the, the decision to do that is to keep the music alive, is to, you know, stay true to the discourse of promoting the music. And I think South African jazz is, is, is very unique in, mo in many ways. Yeah. As much as our artists are very scholaric and very educated in the space of jazz, there's, a, there's a, just a certain essence, there's a spirit in our music that is incredibly unique to who we are. And speaking and of I uniqueness like, of South African jazz music, yeah. how then as a radio presenter, how do you balance uh, uh, American jazz music, for instance, with African jazz music? Because those are two uh, different mm. worlds, but very unique in their own right. Um, well, in terms of being able to balance that scale, that's always a tricky one, isn't it? Mm, I think that's a very is. big question. Um, but you've got to, you've also got to kind of be intuitive as somebody on radio, mm. um, be, a, be an, a social observer. Yeah. So just look out at what the people need, what, what they're going through, what they're reflecting on, where their stance is on... Um, issues of, of liberation, of freedom, of, um, I mean, we've got an election coming up, you know, what their thoughts are. And then you playlist according to that, according okay. to, you know, what's going on in society. Fair enough. So that people Fair are enough. able to really relate and reflect. So it's a delicate balance. I mean, we've got a lot of similarities between South Africa and America, as an example. Mm. They've suffered years of segregation we've had a bad date, you know, the civil rights movement mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. the States. So um, there are many artists overseas that we relate to, from your Herbie Hancocks to, I mean, I could go as deep as Ornette Coleman, uh, you know, your Oscar Petersons, etc. So being able to really be intuitive in how you playlist, being a social observer is very important, um, and, then, and then playlist accordingly. Indeed. Yeah. Now, Sidi, so uh, yeah. in your experience, what unique challenges and opportunities come with uh, balancing the documentation of new and established jazz musicians? Sorry, the, the challenges? The challenges that come with uh, balancing uh, the documentation of the new cats and the established ones? I don't know, man. I just, I just be out doing the shows, attending gigs. Yeah. Um, Engaging people where they are. Yeah. That's not challenging. That's fun. Yeah. You know, um, and the challenge is then how do you curate mm. if you have an exhibition? Mm. Who do you choose who gets left out? That's the big one. Who do you, you know choose and I mean? who gets to left out? And, what? and also like this whole um, idea of jazz. What does that mean? Mm. To who? Who yes. gets to decide? So these, um, I guess, larger questions are the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Because then they get to um, dictate how people get to engage with the music. Mm -hmm. So when we remove music from Sunday music, from quote unquote jazz, we're just like, yo, this is the sound. Yeah, yeah. You know? Then it becomes easier for people to be like, oh yeah, that's, that's actually dope. It becomes people easier to draw the linkages between the sounds mm -hmm. and, and, and to hear that we are all trying to have a global conversation that's based around improvisation, which really mm -hmm. is life. Sure. What happens when your car doesn't work? You know, okay. you call the homie at home. You have to decide on the spot. And that's really what jazz is, uh -huh. you know? Got you, got yeah, you. Yeah, so if someone's horn stops working during the show, someone comes in sure. with the drums, you know, that when power goes out because mm -hmm. of ESCOM and Untitled, the drummer keeps drumming. Mm -hmm. People are yeah. kept in the, in the moment. Yeah, that's so improvisation is key. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Got you. 
Matabo, um, as we wrap the show, unfortunately, uh, can you share examples of you know, some of the contemporary jazz musicians that you know of who still to this present day continue to carry the legacy of jazz music and the essence of jazz music while also, uh, you know, creating a fresh, captivating music that will resonate with modern audiences? Yes, so um, it's quite a lot. Um, so it's mm. quite difficult to, like, choose. But I'm thinking Zoe Mudicha is um, excellent at that. There's um, the likes of um, Bokani Daya, you do find um, Malcolm Gianni, mm -hmm. you find um, Linda Shabalala. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, Duduzo Makatini has been mentioned as well. There's um, Benjamin Jafta. There's, there's a lot. And these are young, um, you know, musicians. They're relatable, even more relatable. Mm -hmm. um, and they're holding up that mirror in terms of the societal issues that we are faced with. And it's very easy for us, even as the younger generation, to um, relate to the sound even more because it seems like we're going back in time, but at the same time, we are in the present and we are also engaging with the music from the lens that we find ourselves in mm, at mm. the moment. Yeah. Now, Gwen, uh, as we uh, unfortunately are wrapping this segment, in terms of relatability, these upcoming jazz artists, whenever they start writing their music, should the genre or should the subject be linear or is it a, uh, the same subject as uh, the big and established ones uh, write about or should it be just about anything that comes to their mind or share their own personal experiences through their writings? I don't think that we as gatekeepers and Sidiso made a brilliant point that we have to be aware of our responsibility as gatekeepers we who broadcast or write about or photograph music. We're gatekeepers. Our decisions actually determine what the public gets access to. I don't think we have any right to tell artists what their music should do or how they should do it. Yeah. Mm. Um, just as the government has no right to tell artists their music must support social cohesion. Absolutely. When the last thing we have happening on the streets is cohesion and Creative arts, all of them, including jazz, okay. have to face up to the problems and conflicts we have. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to end those. it there. We have to end it there. Time is not on our side. But uh, this has been such a brilliant and a beautiful and captivating yes, conversation. You Thank have. you so much for being a part of it and Thanks. just sharing your thoughts and your insights with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Great Thank stuff. You. Happy yeah. jazz, man. Thank you. Thank you.